You want to know my favorite thing about Bargain Bag in October? No mention anywhere at all in it of anything pumpkin spiced. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Here we are for the October edition of Bargain Bag, my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of one mystery CD grab bag assembled from the $1, which was at the time the $4 for a dollar section at Epic Seconds in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, I, I can't believe it's October already. I'm doing this uh, bargain bag, uh, well, er earlier than the last one, but not as early as I had hoped, because since uh, I'm kind of busy with uh, year-end lists at the end of December, and lately I've been doing my bargain bag videos at the end of the month, I'm trying to nudge them toward the beginning of the month, uh, in the fall and winter, uh, toward, you know, toward the end of the year. In the fourth quarter of the year, that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, so yes, I will be talking about, uh, or well, I will be opening a fresh bargain bag, well, fresh to me anyway, uh, containing eight discs. But before I do that, I will talk about the eight discs that were in last month's bargain bag, the eight titles, that is. Uh, one of them this month, this past month, was a two-disc set. So yes, in rough order from Castoffs to Keepers, Let's go ahead and get going. Um, now, the first one I will say I have not listened to yet because it is a holiday CD. I will be including this in my 12 Discs of Christmas holiday episode. Uh, yes, I plan on doing a 12 Discs of Christmas and a 12 Tapes of Christmas. I've still got plenty of holiday uh, cassettes as well to uh, go through the ones that I got from uh, the wonderful gift from my mother's friend Sue. Still a bunch of them not listened to, but anyway. Mason Williams, A Gift of Song, Mason Williams and Friends. I've got a few of his uh, albums, non-holiday albums, one of which is an all-time favorite, so I no doubt will enjoy this, but I wanted to... I don't listen to holiday CDs, I've mentioned this before, until after Thanksgiving. So I will give this one a listen, and you will hear what I think about it uh, at the end of the year. But yes, on, on to the stuff that I did listen to. Uh, I have three keepers, possibly four, uh, so eh, a 50-50 thing, so not too bad. Oh, and there, this one may be a keeper as well, so if that's the case, it'll be more than 50-50. Anyway, uh, Auto Interiors is the name of this band. Let's agree to deceive our best friends. For the record, that's not a very nice thing to do, but anyway, that aside. Uh, this was okay. It was kind of um, post-grunge sort of thing, uh, you know, al alternative rock, like, you know, like a lot of stuff is. Uh, kind of nondescript. Uh, they're, they're, they seem talented enough. It just didn't float my boat, as uh, tends to happen with a lot of stuff. Uh, this next one I thought was post-grunge. Uh, by looking at it, I did not do my research. Uh, well, of course, I couldn't do my research when I'm opening the, opening the CDs live because I don't know what I'm getting. And I don't want to take time in the video to look at my phone and stuff. But uh, Lush is the name of this band, and this is Spooky. I believe this was their debut full-length album. And this had a little bit of a uh, shoegaze sort of a thing. Uh, yeah, shoegaze and what's... There was something else I had thought of it, but when the video, I rolled the camera, it's out of my head. But yeah, kind of a more subdued, atmospheric thing. Uh, not the alt-rock or post-grunge that I thought it was going to be. Uh, not bad. I, I don't think I'm going to keep it. I might give it an another listen just to make sure, but uh, yeah. And then we have a jazz CD that my sister would have enjoyed, Marc Antoine. He is a jazz guitarist, and this is his album Cruisin'. Uh, this was pretty good, I, I have to say. Um, a bit of a Latin flair to it. I mean, kind of, you know, his name kind of suggests that he would uh, tend to lean toward the Latin uh, kind of stuff. Uh, the only th reservation I have about keeping this is... An I'll admit it's a flimsy one. I have his greatest hits, and uh, that greatest hits does cover the time span in which this album is included. So there are two two or three songs from this album already on that, and they were uh, the better songs on here. So probably won't keep it, but I'll give it another listen just to make sure. Uh, then we have a guy who uh, from whom I have three or four albums already, uh, Michael Fronty and Spearhead. Uh, this is all, all Rebel Rockers. I could, couldn't remember if it was All Rebel Rockers or All Rebel Rockers. Because you can, that word you can uh, pronounce and uh, it can mean a couple of different things. Anyway, 
uh, he is very much very much has a social consciousness and protest uh, uh, lyrics in a lot of his songs, and this album is no exception. Very good stuff. It's um, a little bit reggae, a little bit um, what do I want to say, a little bit R and B. So kind kind of like a reggae R and B mix. Uh, he's he's very talented, and his band ha his band as well. They've been around for what thirty years, 25, 30 years, and this is their this is their umpteenth album. I can't remember which album it is, but uh, probably their thirteenth or fourteenth album. I think uh, they're 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 very prolific, and yes, this one was from two thousand eight. So, and I, I may keep this one too. I, I'm still not quite sure. Uh, he's an artist where the albums can be kind of hit and miss. I like some of them. I don't like some of them. Uh, then we have an album that I actually did, in fact, like. Uh, ben Harper, his debut album, Welcome to Welcome to the Cruel World. Oh, there's a little speck of something on the cover. That's why I couldn't read it, even though it's backwards in the uh, picture that I'm looking at on my tablet. Anyway, very good stuff. Uh, kind of kind of blues rock, um, kind of like Lenny Kravitz, but Lenny Kravitz is much more rock and roll. Uh, you put some, you stir some blues into uh, his sound, and that's what you get with Ben Harper. It's pretty good stuff. So good, in fact, that um, in the weeks since listening to it, I picked up sophomore album, uh, Fight for Your Mind. And I actually have not listened to this one yet, but uh, I liked his first one enough that I decided to go ahead and give him a second one a try. Then we have the next to last CD for this week is Christina Aguilera, Back to Basics. I, I mentioned last month that I owned this album quite a while ago, got rid of it, and I'm kind of sorry I did because it was much better than I remember it being. And yeah, just the way that she and the producers um, infuse retro sounds, uh, retro sampling and stuff into these songs is pretty well approaching genius. I mean, the, the track that was the big single was uh, Ain't No Other Man. It's excellent. And uh, gosh, there was another one that I was I really enjoyed back in the day. I think that was, uh, yeah, I think that one has a lot of uh, references to other, you know, to music, you know, other artists and songs in the past. So naturally, I'll like that one. So very good stuff. And But the winner, winner, chicken dinner of this one, uh, this month, last month, is a bit of a surprise to me, as it might be to you. It is George Jones. Uh, his a this is a budget budget greatest hits compilation called Super Hits. Uh, the Sony family of labels put out a Super Hits volume for all their artists. Uh, good stuff. I mean, I, I've gotten to like. It seems like every month that goes by, I tend to like country music a little bit more and a little bit more. And it's just such a great storytelling song. And uh, but George Jones actually puts a, a fair amount of humor into some of his songs as well. Uh, White Lightning is about uh, moonshine, and so it's, you know, it's, that's pretty much when you have a country artist doing a song about uh, some kind of liquor, it tends to be more humorous than than not, uh, although, you know, there are some songs where it it does, you know, it talks about the downsides of liquor consumption, which is just as valid, uh, but yeah, and let's see what, there was a couple other, uh, maybe there wasn't, Maybe there weren't any other uh, outright funny songs or, or well, funny-leaning songs. I think there were. I can't remember. But suffice to say, I like George Jones, uh, what I've heard of him from this CD, at least. And I'm actually kind of considering getting a uh, a more expansive uh, It's collection. I've kind of been looking around online, see what I can find. So anyway, yes, that is the batch from last month. Let me get a drink of water, and I left my water cup back here. I'll just put it back here because <clears throat> that is likely the only sip of water I'll be taking for this video. Okay, let's dig into the new bag. Let's cut into the new bag. If I'm going to be literal. And uh, snip it off the the unneeded bit. Let's go ahead and dig in here without me looking at the discs. What do we have here? Oh, Dig. I've heard about these guys. I have never tried any of their albums, so I will be interested. I believe they are a an alt-rock band. Oh, sorry, I'm covering my seat. Hi, welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Sorry. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of a, that, that's my ugly side. Hi, welcome to Tom's Hit Break. Okay, okay, enough fooling around. Yes, uh, Alt Rock, I believe, is what uh, Dig does or did. So let's do that. Then what do we have here? We have Gaines. Oh, Jeffrey Gaines. That's what it says on the uh, the spine of the thing. Um, Toward the Sun. I have no idea. Uh, produced by Mitchell Froome and Gr Jeffrey Gaines. So uh, he got a pretty well-known producer to do this. I yeah, I have no idea what kind of music this is, so it'll be interesting to hear. Then we have, oh, Holly Cole. Uh, she is, I believe she is a Canadian artist, if, I, if memory serves. And she does mostly um, easy listening or, or jazz and uh, Great American Songbook stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'll be curious. I, I've heard a couple of her albums, one or two of her albums, and eventually got rid of them because they just, you know, I, they just didn't grab me quite as much. But it'll be interesting. I'll be able to sample one more. And then the next one here is, oh, John Tesh. Yes, he is the butt of a lot of jokes um, for his music, kind of, kind of like Yanni is, you know. But I happen to like, I, I still have an affection, even all these years later, for what my first, the first type of music I really got into, which was New Age and uh, instrumental, electronic instrumental, and which would later kind of morph into the smooth jazz and eventually other kinds of instrumental stuff. So, yes, this was uh, an album that he did in... Uh, Kind of has a theme of the Tour de France, the bicycle race. So, yep. There he is. There's John Tesh. And, uh, yeah, those of you who are old enough to remember, he was the host, uh, the one of the original hosts of, I think one of the original hosts of Entertainment Tonight, which is a, I believe it's still running, an entertainment news magazine here in the States. Anyway, but that's neither here nor there. Here we have Mark Chestnut, a uh, fairly popular country singer. Uh, almost goodbye. I have never heard a, listened to a Mark Chestnut album before. At least I, I don't remember ever hearing one. So we'll see what that one's like. And then we have uh, the oh the Neville Brothers, Family Groove. Uh, yeah, this is um, a soul uh, R and B and soul family group. Um, Aaron Neville is a member. Well, I don't know if he he's a member of the family. I don't know if he is actually in this group or not, but. Uh, yeah, I'm always up for some good old soul music from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Don't mind that at all. Next to the last CD is... Oh, Indigo Girls. Swamp Ophelia. I think this is the the earliest album of theirs that I don't have. I have four of their albums, I think. So, uh, yeah, I saw this one on the shelf and decided to uh, buy it in the ridiculously huge buying frenzy of stuff to put in these bags. So, yeah. And then we have, oh, Midtown. Uh, the album is called Forget What You Know. And I don't know what these guys sound like. Uh, it's on the Columbia label. So, uh, oh, produced by Butch Walker. So it's probably rock of some sort. Gee, that narrows it down, right? <laughs> anyway, so that is the assortment that uh, I will be giving you my thoughts on next month. So, how's about them apples? Or in this case, how's about them CDs? Anyway, uh, yeah, a fairly short and sweet video here. Uh, the counter is only at 15 minutes. It's, uh, well, 15 and a half minutes. The ultimate video is going to be shorter than that. So, but yeah, Bargain Bag, uh, that's it for my October edition of Bargain Bag. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notification bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.